What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Data Career Podcast. In this video or this podcast, I'm going to be talking about how you can build your next or your first data analytics project in a really easy three to four step guide that's going to take you, you know, about two hours to get started with your first project. This is the Data Career Podcast, episode 45. Welcome to the Data Career Podcast, the podcast that helps aspiring data professionals land their next data job. Here's your host, Avery Smith. If you guys have been part of my world for any length of time, you know that I'm a huge believer and a huge proponent for data science projects. I think data projects are the cheat code to landing your first or next data job. If you've been to my webinar, then you know you've heard of the SPN method, which I believe everyone needs to use to land their next data job. S standing for skills, P standing for projects and portfolio, and N standing for network. So literally, in my opinion, projects are a third of landing your next data job. If you haven't been to that webinar, there'll be a link in the description down below to go check it out. Totally worth it. Free, about 45 hour long uh, action packed and will help you make good decisions in your data career journey. But today we are here to talk about projects and focus on data science projects and how you can build your first or your next data science project in the easiest way possible. And first, I want to start by saying a quote from Pablo Picasso. And you're probably thinking, Avery, what does Pablo Picasso have anything to do with data analytics and data science? And the answer is, I don't know, probably not much. But he has this quote and it's, he says, and keep in mind, this is Picasso. This is like the person who's best at art in the world, all time, maybe. One of the all time greats at making beautiful art pieces. So that's who this is coming from. Keep that in mind. And he said, all art is theft. Now think about that for a second. Say it again. All art is theft. Now, what did Picasso, one of the greatest painters, artists of all time, why would he say that? That all art is theft. And in my opinion, it's because it's true. Now, not necessarily theft as in copy, carbon copy, blank plagiarism. But the idea is that there is no original art. There's nothing original in this world. And we are all just mixtures of what our environment and different factors in our lives are. And we, are, we base our actions off of those. And so the idea is that there's no original art, but all artists are inspired by the people that went before them. And for instance, I don't know exactly when Picasso lived. I'm not, my art history is not that great. But Picasso might have taken things from, I don't know, Michelangelo and who does the scream? See, I'm very bad at my painters. Michelangelo and I don't know, some other famous painter and combines or taking different ideas from this person and that person, combined them together and made something totally new. Let's take a Korean barbecue food. You guys ever had Korean barbecue? There's Korean food and then there's barbecue food. You combine those together and you get this Korean barbecue or, or Asian fusion or something like that. The idea that you can take part of one thing, part of another, combine them together, and you'll get a whole new thing. Now, hopefully you're still listening because I'm going relate to relate this back to how that actually matters when you're doing a data project. And literally, in my opinion, this is the easiest way to get started with your first data project. Just take the Pablo Picasso quote, all art is theft, and replace it. All data projects are theft. Now, once again, I'm not saying to go copy and paste someone else's project. I'm not saying that at all. Please do not do that. That is plagiarism. What I'm saying is be inspired. Here's the steps right here. Step one, go to towardsdatascience.com. Awesome medium publication with loads of different projects. Go there, spend 30 minutes reading. You're going to find maybe one to two projects that spoke to you. All right. Take one or two of them and replicate it on your own. So I do mean in terms of the code or the visualization, literally try to copy their exact same thing. Okay. Now, once you're there, you cannot publish. That would be plagiarism. That's stealing. We don't want to do that. What you're going to do is take a technique or some other data set or add some point of analysis or technique that you had that the original author did not do and add it to this project. So for instance, you might find a really cool project on, let's say, healthcare analytics, okay? And they might have done everything in Tableau. My point is take all they've done in Tableau, and then maybe you can make an extra three graphs. 
Or maybe you can take that data, put it into SQL, run some cool queries. Or maybe you run that in Python and you create something like that. The point here is that you're not starting from a blank page. Writers, they're always like, it's always hard to write from a blank page. You always need to warm up or have some sort of an inspiration. And the same is true with, with data projects. There's only so many different types of data projects that you can do in this world. Chances are that there's been done, one done that's at least similar to what you're doing. Now, once again, I am not saying go steal that stuff, but be inspired by that stuff. Read two articles about healthcare analytics, read a third, copy the third, replicate it, and then add techniques from article one and article two on there. Now, the way that this is one of the, the strategies that I used when I did 30 data science projects in 30 days, that was a huge feat to be doing one whole data project every day and then posting about it on YouTube, making like a seven, eight minute video, explaining it, showing it, stuff like that. That was a huge undertaking. And so one of the techniques that I actually used is this technique, which is where I went to towardsdatascience.com, found a project I like, replicated it, and then twisted five to eight things about it. And you can always attribute the original article. So a really concrete example of this was like day 28 or day 29 in doing those 30 day science projects in 30 days. You guys can go find this on YouTube, the whole tutorial is there. It's, it's the project I did about optimizing a McDonald's McHealthy menu, basically finding the most healthy menu at McDonald's. If you're trying to as calories, maximize proteins, minimize fats, I don't know, have a bunch of different constraints set and make the most perfect McHealthy meal at McDonald's. So I got that original idea from my friend, Kyle Pastor. He actually did this project a couple of years ago. And I remember he showed me and I was like, that is one of the coolest projects I've ever seen. And so I always had in the back of my mind that I would love to do something with that data set, maybe twist it a little bit. And so when I did the 30, 30 data science projects in 30 days, I realized, wow, what if I just took Kyle's project that he's already done, he's already posted about it. I'm going to take it, I'm going to replicate it, and then I'm going to do something cooler with it. I'm going to improve it. And so what I did for that project was I turned the whole thing into a Python streamlit web application so that it wasn't just sitting, like it wasn't just to us Cody people or us data people where in order to use the McHealthy menu optimizer, you had to be running Python and be setting everything in the Python script. I made it a public web app. So anyone in the world, I could send it to my mom, I could send it to my aunt, I could send it to my uncle, and they could be using the same tool. And it took me a long time to, to put it up as a web application, but I did that. And that's a data project. It's a separate data project from Kyle's. I used Kyle's code and everything that I did, but I used a lot of extra code to make something new. And so you guys can do that as well. You go find a cool project and add to it. Now, once again, I, this is a very thin line. I am never saying to copy and paste. I am never saying to plagiarize, but just realize that there's been a lot of work done before you, and you can use the work that's been done before you, right? Like you can use tools and resources that are there to help you. It's almost like you want to do a data visualization project and you're like, no, I'm not going to use Tableau because someone else built Tableau. And that's cheating. I have to use pencil and paper to make all my graphs and stuff like that. No, use Tableau because it's available to you. And so if there's different tutorials, different projects posted online, use those to your advantage. Take those projects, look at them, see what you like, replicate it on your own, and then add your own twist. It is seriously that simple. And if you've been really struggling to make your first data project, start there because that is one of the easiest things you can do. It's basically copying and pasting with a twist, right? You're going to provide your own twist at the end, but at least the start, the ideas, they can come from someone else. And once again, you could take two separate projects and combine them together. That right there is a great project. And that maybe even takes a little less ingenuity, a little less thinking. This is exactly what they did research in academia. I don't know how many of you guys have an academic background. I don't have a PhD. I do have a master's, but I don't have a PhD. But when I was a junior and senior in college, I was actually working with a professor doing research. And I actually published a paper where I was the first author. And the first author just means that you were the main person writing the paper and the main person doing the research behind it. And mine was in data analytics in chemical, large chemical systems. And through that process, I basically learned that the way that you make a publication, the way that you come up with a novel idea one that's good enough to be published is by actually just reading a bunch of papers, seeing what a person at University of Wisconsin did, seeing what a person at University of Miami did, seeing what LA and 
maybe a Switzerland paper here and there, reading a bunch of different papers, seeing the different approaches and taking three or four of them and combining them. That right there is something novel that's worth being published in the academic world. And the same is true in the data projects world. Read five projects, see how they did everything. Take a, the data set from one and the technique from another, bam, project. Take the data set from another and the data viz from another and you got another project. Like you could literally mix and max these projects so well. And by doing that, you're almost gonna have a guide teaching you how to do all these projects and all the techniques in them. And you're really going to learn. So it's a win-win because you are going to be building a project. You are going to be learning and just always make sure that you're attributing the projects and the people that came before you, right? We're all standing on the shoulders of, the, of our forefathers or some quote like that. And the coolest part, you guys, is I've actually done 30 Day of Science projects for you already. I've given you access to all of the code, all of the data, and a video explaining each and every one of them. So I'm going to have the link to that in the description down below. You guys can watch this awesome playlist. I have 30 ideas for you. You could take one of my projects, replicate it, add some stuff. You could take two of my projects, combine the technique from one with the data set from another. That's another project. You guys yourselves will have 30 data science projects, maybe not in 30 days. I know this method works, you guys, and I'd be stoked for you guys to check it out. Also, if you guys have not been to my how to land the data job, even without experience webinar, I highly recommend that. So you guys can check out in the description down below. And lastly, the Data Career Podcast is back. If you guys couldn't tell, I'm releasing a new episode every single week right now. So if you guys are enjoying it, please leave a five-star rating wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're on Apple, I would extra appreciate it if you left a review. And you can even say in the review what you'd like to hear on the show. I do read every reply that we have, and they mean a lot to me. So. Thank you guys so much for listening to this week's episode and we will talk later. I hope you enjoyed that episode. And if you did, I'm going to have an awesome free masterclass that I know you're going to love. We're going to talk about a lot of things this episode talked about. You can get it absolutely for free at datacareerjumpstart.com training or using the link in the show notes down below. Hope to see you there.